The following presentation was recorded at the 2014 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2014 for helping make these videos possible. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Daniel Bartholomew. Um, I'm going to be talking today about Handler Socket. Um, just before I begin, I am not a big time DBA, so if you've got some crazy question, I will probably not be able to answer that. <laughs> um, uh, I do work on the MariaDB project. Uh, my primary responsibility is to, um, I'm the release manager um, for MariaDB, so. Um, you know, the signing key, my name's in it, and I create the repositories and things like that. So um, I also wrote um, a couple of MariaDB books uh, last year. Um, the, the content of this talk comes from um, the MariaDB cookbook, uh, where it has, a, it has a chapter on, ha on how to use Handler Socket. So um, uh, at certain points, I'm going to sit down. Uh, just because I'm, I kind of wanted this to kind of be how-to-y, uh, interactive, um, actually show you Handler Socket working in the real world, well, on my laptop. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, so with that, let's begin. Um, first up, um, I mean, insanity, that was kind of, uh, you know, link bait. Um, trying to get you here. It's not, it's not that insane. It actually is, is quite a simple idea. Um, um, it comes from whoop, this guy, uh, Yoshinori Matsunobu, um, and uh, it's been around for a few years now. Um, and uh, just to, to describe it in a nutshell, you have a database, right? We're all familiar with those. Um, you have your data, which is, um, you know, text. It could be binary, it could be whatever. Um, and then, then the data is stored in your database um, in some sort of format on the disk. Um, and then the mechanism by which we go in and out of the database um, is the SQL layer, um, you know, the layer that, uh, where you have the, the, the um, optimizer, all of that stuff. Um, and so you know, data goes in, data goes out, it all goes through SQL statements. Um, so, um, you know, that allows you to do all sorts of powerful things with your data. You can do joins, you can, you can um, do very crazy queries that, that fetch exactly the data that you want or correlate it in a certain way that's useful to your business. Um, but um, one thing in the NoSQL world um, that, that um, is really popular is there's some kinds of data. Um, wouldn't it be nice if you could just skip all that? What if you don't need all that? What if you... You, what if you have kind of a, just a very simple flat schema? You've got a lot of it, um, and you know maybe it's maybe it's time series data from from some um, monitors um, in in your business. Um, maybe it's uh, uh, just simple um, key value pairs from whatever, and you just need a way to quickly get the data in and out fast. Um, uh, in in those sorts of cases, sometimes the SQL layer becomes a bottleneck. So wouldn't it be nice if you could just skip that when you need to? And so that is the basic idea behind Handler Socket. It's an end run around getting data in and out of your database. Um, it comes with some pretty big caveats, um, some pretty big um, gotchas, uh, but we'll get into that. Um, but it does give you, um, it can potentially give you some very great performance if your workload matches what Handler Socket can do. Um, so, uh, in MariaDB, enabling Handler Socket is very easy. Um, it's just install SO name Handler Socket and you're done. Uh, well, almost done. You also need to add those three lines to your MySQLD section in your um, configuration file um, and then restart MariaDB um, and it'll be enabled. If you're not on MariaDB, um, uh, you might have to you know, go, go get the source code for Handler Socket, compile it, and install it like you would a, another third party plugin. Um, but that's, that's, the basic, that's the basic thing. Um, the, you'll see in the, in the MySQLD section, you know, you, you, Handler Socket could be running on a different server, um, and then you, all, you're also def, you also define the port, the ports. Um, you always have a, a, 
a read port and a write port. Um, and so um, once you have enabled handler socket, how do you tell, you know, you, you restart MariaDB or MySQL and it's like, well, is, is, any, is anything happening? Um, well, the, the way to do that is show process list. So if we just connect to um, uh, the local server and then just do a show process list, there you see all of the handler sockets. Normally, this server is this idle. Um, it's, I mean, it's just running on my laptop. So uh, when you do a show process list, the only one that you're really going to see most of the time is just, just the regular, um, you know, the, the root process. But when handler socket is running, you're going to see a whole bunch of these handler socket processes. Um, uh, one thing that you also might notice is there's a whole bunch of these RD processes. Um, and then there's one WR process. Those are the read processes and the write processes. So if we go back, um, the default is, uh, if, if you haven't configured it, is there's going to be 16 read threads and one write thread. Um, this is, of course, configurable um, uh, through these two variables, handler socket threads and handler socket threads WR. Um, so the, you can. Um, Start there. You can go um, as high as 3,000, but don't do that. <laughs> um, uh, launching 6,000 threads with, for no reason is kind of dumb. But um, it's also recommended if, if, if you do want to add more threads, usually you, most workloads are you know, read heavy. So you want to add, you could add read threads, uh, write threads, you know, you're, you're very rarely going to need more than just a few. Um, so uh, the defaults, I, you know, for me, I, I never need to change it. So, so there you go. So um, how do you communicate with Handler Socket? Well, how many in here have ever sent an email using Telnet talking directly to an SMTP server? Yes. Knew this was the right crowd for this demo. <laughs> OK. so. So, I mean, it's running on a port, right? And it's, it's, it's plain text. Um, uh, there's very minimal security in handler sockets. So this is something that often, you know, you just, it's a local server talking to the local running MySQLD process. Um, and so, so what, we're, what we can do is we can just tell net to the server, um, and then, then you start sending it, you know, messages. Um, as you do with, with this sort of thing. So um, this, is, this is what you would use to open up a connection to your database. Um, just to describe those, you have, you have a, um, the command P uh, that, that tells handler socket that you're trying to connect. Um, I don't know why P was used, but it, that's what it is. Um, then, you, then you specify a connection ID. It can be any positive integer. i just using zero here because that's where you start. Um, and then the, the database here, my database is demo, then the table that you want to connect to, this is the doctor's table, then the key to search on, um, for here we're just going to use the primary key, so we just use the keyword primary, and then you list the columns in a comma separ separated format. So for this simple table, it's, you know, ID, given name, and surname. Um, uh, and and then, then once you've done that, your, your, your connection is open. Um, reading data is another uh, thing. Um, so with reading data, instead of, instead of starting your command with a letter, you start it with the connection ID. Um, then you put in a comparison operator. Um, you put in the, the number of keys to search on. We only um, specified when we created our connection ID, of zero, our, our connection zero, we only specified one key, so the number would be one. Then we're specifying the value to search for. Say you want to search for the first um, record in the database with uh, key ID one, and then the you know maybe the maximum records to to get. And so this this is a query that searches for every uh, record in the database where the key is greater than one. Um, the comparison operators you can use would be the you know you can do equalities, you can do greater than, less than, greater than equal, and less than equal. Um, so um, let's demo that. So if we have our system here, now everything has to be separated with um, tabs. And if you don't do tabs, um, it will just say, ha ha. Um, 
So here, oh, whoops. <laughs> First thing you tell that. Whoop. So that's why I'm pasting because it's very um, fickle. So we telnet in and then it just says that we're there. Now we'll connect to our doctor's table. And then, okay, so, so what it's saying here is zero. It comes back and says, okay, your success um, and we are connected. So uh, that's all that return value is, is telling us. And then let's say, let's, let's, let's do an equality search where we try to get, we're, we're connect, connection zero, have it equal to ID one and return one record. And so there we go. There is the first doctor. Um, and so, um, Hmm? Is that a tab delimiter? Yeah, yeah, it has to be tabs. No spaces, it's what tabs. Tab in That's one of those limitations I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is very simple. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so here, here's, here's one where we, where we try to, where we go for um, all the records in the, in the uh, database, in the table. Um, greater than or equal to one. And so then, and you'll notice it just spits them out. That's just one long string, tab delimited. And so, so there, there's all the people in our database. And so um, when, what, what, whenever, whatever is consuming this data, they, you, know, you, just, you just read the tabs as they come, come across. So let's see. I don't know. I've never tried. Because if it's tab delimited, then it's just dumping a bunch of records. It might just be two tabs. So null is the same name as here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Anything else that's interesting? Not really. Um, until we get to the writing. This, this is just a query that, that takes from greater than, greater than the first ID do a maximum of two records, and so it just spits out to. Um, so writing, um, you, you, can re you can read and write on the write port. You can only read on the read port, naturally. Um, so to connect to, to, to write, um, to open up a write port, we connect to the, to the uh, port that we specified. Um, and then for inserting data, um, you have the connection ID, uh, an insert operator, which is a plus. Um, the number of columns that you specified, um, then, then just the fields. Um, however many fields you specified when you opened your connection. Um, you, just, you just list, you just put those in one after another. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna check um, if you have a, a, a primary key um, crash, you have duplicate primary keys, it's not going, you know, you, you're gonna have to handle that um, on your own because It'll just, it'll just fail, and it'll, it'll just come back, and instead of returning one as the first field in the return, it'll, it'll return a one saying that, that it failed. Is the number of fields redundant here? Because it knows the number of fields when you open the connection. It yes, it is. <laughs> I just know that it's required. You have to put it in just the way that handler socket works. You have to put it in. Um, it might be just so that it knows how many fields are coming after. You know, how, what, what's, so, that, so that handler socket knows what's coming is basically the idea, uh, why you put a three in there. Do you know if it'll handle the, uh, like an auto increment field? Like if you insert a new record into the database, because that's what we're doing, right? It's yeah. It's a SQL-based database. Yeah. Table. So what you, would, what you would probably do, if you've got, if you've got something that auto increments and auto fills, then you, when you open the connection, you would just specify the columns that don't, that don't worry about, you know. So it will do the auto yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's like when you do a, an SQL query and you're inserting and you just skip the primary key field because it's going to be filled when you insert the rest of it. That's what I was so you just, yeah, when you, when you set up your, when you define your connection, you would do that. Cool. So. Okay, so updating and deleting data, it's, it's um, another thing. Um, 
so they have some, you know, their own brand of insanity for that. So you have the, com you have the connection ID and the, then the comparison operator, you know, you want the field to equal what? Um, the number of columns that you're actually going to be touching um, when you update. The, the key that you're searching for, so in this case we're, we're searching for the ID3. Um, and then they, they want a limit. Uh, you, you limit the number of rows that it will update before, before stopping, um, even if there's more in the database that match. Um, the search offset, so you can, you can skip ahead if, you've got, if you're searching on an ID field and you want to skip to the 3 million mark before you start searching, you can set that in. Um, and then you do, you do a U if you want to update a record. You do a D if you want to delete. If you're updating a record, and then, then after the U, you would put in the updated values tab delimited. So, so, if, you, um, so if you notice right here, um, I don't know if any of you guys do Doctor Who. Um, this guy is an actor who played him back in the 70s, and his name is J-O-N. So let's update his record. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to break out of our Telnet session and reconnect to the right port. So we reconnect to the right port, and then we open up a connection to our table again. This time we're going to call it um, connection one, just to, because we have to call it something. And then um, here we'll go ahead and insert the rest of the actors who have played him on TV. And so you see right there, um, that's one of the nice features about Handler Socket. If, if there's a lot of data coming in and it can batch, batch them, it will. So you'll notice that um, when we, when we inserted them all, um, it, it, didn't, it didn't give us a response after each one. It batched them and then gave us the response codes. And so it's like, it's success, inserted one record, success. So. We inserted a few records, but it only gave us four responses. It's right here. This is handler socket. It, it just, it just does it. You know, it's, it's, it's the pretty output is not something you're going to see. It's, it's, this isn't meant really for human consumption, you know. It, it's like talking to an SMTP server. It, it looks strange. The output does. It's, it's for a machine to parse and all that. So um, we have done that. Um, okay. Here's my update statement. So we open up, a, we, we, we do that. Um, we're just interested in doing the given, in, in, in updating his given name. So when I define the connection, that's the only, that's the only column that I specify. And then um, when I go to update, there we go. We, we put in the update. His, his ID record is number three. And so that did not work. I don't know why. Demo doctor, binary, given name. It could be that there's a missing tab because it is very picky. But that's the general idea. You, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's an error right there. I don't know why. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, and we can see if we, if we do a search on it, it's still spelled John. So sorry about that. It worked this morning. OK, so deleting. Let's open up another connection just because we can. Um, insert some more people. Um, if we do a search, whoops, I keep forgetting I can't. There's no scroll buffer. So there we go. Whoops. All right. So here, to delete these people that we just inserted, it's, um, it's one of those things where once, once you hit the D, um, 
it doesn't care about the columns because all, it knows that every, every record above ID 100, it's just going to delete. It's going to delete a maximum of 10, but there's only four there. So um, it's just going to delete them. And it, and it comes back and it says that it deleted four records. Um, and so if we do a search on them, we can see that they're not there. Um, so it, it did um, take them off. Now, if there had been triggers on those columns, they'd find them? Mm -hmm. As far as I know. Never tried it. I've never tried it. <laughs> but as far as I know. Okay, so they might not fire. All right, let's see. Okay, we've done that. Okay, so, so that's, that's kind of um, interacting um, through Telnet, which is pretty raw. Um, and so most people aren't going to do that. Um, I mean, you might write your own client to talk directly to the port, um, but people have already done that, so you don't necessarily have to write your own client. Um, but there is a, a shim layer that, that you'd put in between handler socket and, like, say, Perl or Python. Um, and so that, that's, that's called the uh, uh, libhs client. Um, and installing that is really easy on Ubuntu and Debian. Um, it's not as easy on Fedora, CentOS, and Rarhel. That's about as compact as I could make it. Um, I mean, it's, it, you're basically, you're downloading, you're, you're compiling it, you, and then you're installing the files where they need to go. Um, uh, the, reason, the reason I'm doing it this way, where, where you're installing just specific files, uh, like, like the, the HPPs and the .as, is because um, when you download the source, which is right there along the bottom, um, that's all of it. That's the plugin, the HS client library, and the um, Perl, um, the Perl, uh, whatever you call plugin, plugin for Perl. Um, so, module. Hmm? CPAN module. I think there is a CPAN module, but it, when you download the handler socket source uh, from GitHub, it comes with everything that you would need. And so, I wasn't interested in that because I have. I have the, MyS the MySQL plugin in MariaDB already installed, and um, so all I need is the, the HS client library, and so just compile and install that by itself. So uh, these slides will be available, so you don't have to worry about writing this all down. I have a question. Do you know if this is using, like, say, for example, the backend storage in NODB tables? Does it use the NODB software layer at all? To access the data? It's talking directly to InnoDB. So it is using the InnoDB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, um, one, one, of, uh, one of Handler Socket's limitations, though, is that it only talks to specific storage engines. InnoDB, uh, ExtraDB are the, are the main ones. Um, it also talks with Spider. Um, I'm not sure about other storage engines, um, if it can talk to them or not. And so, so you are limited in what storage engines you can use. but. In ODB is the one most people use, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, that's installing it. So so Python um, uh, installing installing it on Python. Um, there there I think there is a module that works, but when I was setting this up, there was an issue with you know one of the easy install ones um, that. I ran into issues, so this is the workaround that I did, was to compile it from source and install it that way, and even then I had to edit the setup.py so it would actually install. Um, so, so that's what I had to do, um, but it was pretty easy. Um, the docs are there, um, uh, and there, there's others. There's, there's multiples for each language, it seems. People, people write their own, and some of them have friendlier interfaces than others, uh, but you know, they're, they're out there um, for just about, well, for most of the popular languages. Um, they're not out for every language, I'm sure. But most of the popular languages will have a, have something that will talk to handler socket. So the, um, 
Installing it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not as simple as other modules, but, but fairly simple. So um, if we quit out of this, there we go, and we're going to go ahead and um, fire up the interactive Python because that's funner. Okay, so so the, the, there, there's actually this, this particular um, Python library, it has two, two ways of interacting. There's, there's a sockets one, and then there's a manager. So if you import the manager, um, uh, let's see, assign to manager and set up our things, you'll notice that it, it's, it's fairly close to the, um, to the way that you would do it in Telnet. I mean, um, you know, you're setting up, you're setting up a connection to the, to the doctor's table. You're setting up the, what the columns that you're going to use, things like that. So, um, oh, there's something I forgot. If I am going to do this, I need to reset my data. And I don't know why that's freezing like that. Yeah, there we go, let's see. There we go, okay. I'll just paste in those others again. So the, the HS get um, uh, method, um, basically we're, we're connecting to the demo table. I mean, you don't have to, the manager's nice because you don't have to set up your connection ahead of time. Um, with, with the sockets ver version, you, have, you, you set up a, a connection and then you identify that connection whenever you're connecting to it. The manager, you just tell it the relevant information and it just goes and does it. Um, and so it's, it's done it and so um, we just have to print it out and we get it. Um, so the, the, that, that, that data equals HS get blah, 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 blah. That was um, looking for ID number five, which is Peter Davison. Um, so uh, the other way, like I was saying, is, is this, um, oh, I was going to demo inserting. So same, same thing with like, with like an insert. Uh, the manager's nice because you don't have to set up, you don't have to set up that you're connecting, um, uh, you set up your connection ahead of time. It'll just set it, it'll just do it for you. And boom, it's it, it set up the handler socket, talk to the, talk to the database, insert the data, and you're done. Um, so the, sockets, the socket version is a little bit um, uh, more uh, raw, I guess. So with this one, you do have to set up, um, uh, set up the socket connection, and then you do have to set up um, connecting to the uh, connecting to the database and define that connection. And so you set that up, you assign everything, and then um, you know you can uh, run run queries and and it'll it'll return them. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean it's it's it, it's easier than doing t raw telnet, but it's pretty it's closer to raw telnet than, than maybe what you're used to with a, with a full client. Um, let's see. Then for, um, so same thing with writing. When you're setting that up, um, you set up the write socket. Uh, you specify the connection, specify the table, the, the data, um, and then you can um, insert and then if we um, do a search we can see that it was inserted. Uh, same thing with with updating a table. This one should work this time because it won't have any typos in it or maybe not. Hey it did so there you see that it that it um, updated the updated the uh, updated the field that we wanted it to update. So 
So, and then um, same thing with deleting. Um, set up the connection. Okay, there's our data before. Then we go to um, insert some junk entries, then locate those, then um, show that they're there and then delete them. Um, and so then we've deleted them. It's, it's, it, the, data, the entries are there when we did that search. Um, then we said, hey, delete everything above 100. It deletes them. It comes back and says, hey, you deleted three. And then um, we can do another search, and it shows that, that they are um, gone. So I mean, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, you know, one, once you have it set up that you know, you're shuffling data in and out. Um, and it, it's simple, it's, it's just, it's, uh, you just figure out exactly how to do it and then your program takes care of it from there. So pretty simple. Um, it's, the same, it's the same sort of thing with Ruby, although Ruby does not have a manager type interface that I know about. Um, maybe there's one now. Um, it's been a while since I, since I looked at Ruby. Uh, but installing it's really easy. I mean, it's just, gem install handler socket is basically all you have to do and it'll install the handler socket one. There's another one called HS, H, H socket or something like that, I think, but uh, the handler socket one seems to work well. So that's what I used. Um, and then it's, it's more, it's kind of more of the same. Um, oh. Reset my data. Um, you know, loading the interactive Ruby interpreter. Um, but it, it's more of the same thing. I mean, I mean you're, it, it's using Ruby syntax instead of Python syntax, but in the end, it's, it's very similar. I mean, you're, you're, setting up, you're, op you're setting up a connection, you're opening it, you, um, you, uh, do, you can do searches. Um, this, is, this one's connecting to the, to the read-only port. Here's a connection to the write port, and it's the same thing. It's just, it's just you know, like the method name is, is different. You're execu you know, you use, you use the methods that, that this um, Ruby library provides. Um, and and it, it just, you know, you do it, you execute it, blah, 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 blah. It's more of the same. Um, uh, same thing for, for um, like, inserting and then deleting. Um, uh, the, the syntax is actually quite close to what the raw syntax would be. It just, it just does it in a Ruby-ish way instead of... Um, just raw, raw text. Um, and then, um, so kind of skip over that demo. Um, for Perl, um, you know, like do CPAN. Um, here I already had the handler socket source code, so I just installed it from the handler socket source code. I went into the handler socket source directory into the Perlnet handler socket um, directory and then just whoops, and then just made it. And, and it, very simple to do. Um, CPAN would probably be even easier. Um, but there's the, there's the website for it. Um, and um, of course, being Perl, you know, it has its own, own loveliness um, because, you know, it's Perl. Uh, so, but uh, again, it's, it's the same sort of thing applies. I mean, you, you, you load it, you load the handler socket library, then you um, specify your connection, you specify your connection to your database, and then here you are, um, uh, what I did, what I did here since I was writing a full script this time instead of, instead of just doing it interactively is I, um, I just did a while loop that loops through and prints them out. So this one actually has, has prettier output. So if we, um, let's see. So if we do a read, it, it reads them out and then prints them out, um, which, which is kind of cool. Um, same thing for the, um, 
for the insert test, you know, you set up, you set up your connection, you um, tell it to um, execute uh, an insert um, using the same sorts of things that that all of the clients seem to seem to do. They're all in in, in their core. They're they're pretty similar. So um, same thing with updates. Um, open the connection. Tell it what to tell it what to do, and so on. Um, and delete as well. So, just as a quick demo of these. Um, so I do some inserts. If I do a read again, you'll see that the inserts were successful. Do some. Um, do the. Whoop, do the update. Um, I, I I decided to be nice and have it spit out how many rows it updated. Um, whereas handler socket normally just doesn't doesn't care about informing you of things. I mean, it's, it informs you, but in a very basic way. So I did it in a nice way. Um, and then you read again, it, the update was successful. And then uh, last one, I just insert and then delete at the same time. And so I told it to tell me how many rows were deleted. And so uh, it's still the same. So all of this, all of this will be available. I'm going to upload a little tarball of all this example code um, so you can, you can Look through it at your leisure, whichever language you like. Um, there are also um, C libraries and other libraries, um, you know, non-scripting language libraries uh, that you can use with Handler Socket um, to Im Im incorporate in just about any any type of thing. So, what are the limitations? Well, as as you probably got from the demos, I mean, you're, this, we're talking about basic CRUD, you know. Create, read, update, delete. If it's anything more complicated than that, it's not going to work for you. You know, you're not going to do joins. You're not going to do um, any sort of conditional anything. Um, you know, you can you can insert something, you can read something, you can update something, you can delete something. That's it. Um, all the searches are on keys. So if if there isn't isn't a, isn't a key defined, you can't search on it. If it's not if it's not a key, you can, it's not it's not searchable by handler socket. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned before, um, only some storage engines are are supported. In, in ODB, ExtraDB, of course, um, and then Spider, um, other storage engines that you can't use with it. Yeah. Multi column. Yes, you can specify multi column keys. Yeah, there was actually there was actually a field on one of the, one of the previous slides where it, where it's where you specify the the number of columns of the key to search on. So yeah, you, you can specify a multi-column key. It will simply, it will just, it, basically no. <laughs> um, it, you'll, you'll, just, you'll, you'll just get a failure back, you know, if, if there's some sort of constraint or whatnot. So, um, It's just going to fail, and it's going to fail ugly, ugly and so um, it's not going to help you try to figure out why it failed. You know, it's not like it's going to be any sort of any sort of. Um, yeah, yeah, all of that's in the SQL layer. But the benefits are very big. Um, I mean, you have lower CPU usage. There's no parsing. Um, it, it also batch processes whatever pros possible, so it lowers your CPU usage. It also lowers your network usage if network is if network throughput is a, is a problem for you because it, I mean, you saw, you saw the, the, um, the syntax. It's extremely compact compared to SQL, right? So, so your network bandwidth is going to be quite, quite a bit lower. Um, so, so if you can live with the constraints of handler socket, the benefits can be quite big. Um, uh, just to uh, show you, um, in this blog post, um, if, you just, if you just search for Handler Socket Benchmark, you'll, you'll get this blog post. But this other guy summarized the benefits. He did a test. So MySQL or MariaDB with SQL on this particular server is getting 105,000. Uh, yeah. Hun no, 100 and 100,000 yeah, queries per second. Um, with Memcache, you could get 420,000. But with Handler Socket, you could get 750,000. So, no binary data. 
Hmm? No way to do binary data. No thumbnail I, I would guess not. Um, this, this, this is optimized for simple text-based data. Um, and, but, you know, and then, then you also notice the server, the CPU, you see with, with, with regular MySQL, the CPU, the user, and the system, you know, and then with Memcast that flips, but then with handler socket it's more balanced. So you're, you're more, you know, it's just, I, I just found that interesting. But the, the main number that, 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 you know, people seem to care about, I mean, on a server that could get 100,000 queries per second, we using handler socket, if the, since if your workload supports it, you can, you know, seven times as much. So, so that's the benefit. So um, some resources, um, the MariaDB uh, knowledge base um, has a section on handler socket, using it, enabling it, things like that, examples. Um, the MariaDB cookbook has a whole chapter on it. And if you leave your card on the table, I'm going to be giving away 10 of them tomorrow. All I need is a name and an email address because that's what the publisher wants so they can email you the link. Um, they're DRM free, so just so you know. It's, it's, it's from PACT. Uh, um, and so they, um, so yeah, if you, if you leave, if you leave a name, I'll be, I'll be drawing 10 of those and, and giving those away tomorrow. Um, so any other, any questions? I think we handled a lot of them just during, but is there any other questions? I mean, it's a, it's a limited thing, but it can be very beneficial. Batch processing, how is it, uh, it's either success or fail? Yeah, basically. It probably stops at the first failure, knowing handler socket. You know, it, it tries to batch them where it can, um, but it, it's, some, it's something where, you know, you'll know that the batch failed, and so then, it, then it's just a matter of, you know, you figure, out, figure out. Which one's the batch failed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean a, lot of this, a lot of this you'll be setting up so it's an automated system where, you know, you won't, ha you won't be having that. You're skipping the SQL there. So, so you're, you're skipping all of that stuff we love about SQL. We're skipping all that stuff we love about. What does SQL have to do with transactions? Hmm? What does SQL have to do with transactions? Well. I mean, you can do the transactions with SQL as well, but it's made Yeah. But not in handler socket. What's that? But not handler socket. Okay. <laughs> I haven't done extensive testing to see how, when it fails, how ugly it is. Um, okay, so welcome to so, my yeah. welcome, welcome to the NoSQL world. <laughs> I mean, this, 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 this is, this, it's, a, it's, it, it's limited. It has limited use, but in those instances where it can be used, it can be very useful. So, um, it's all about living, you know, if you can live within that usefulness. <laughs> So, all right, thank you. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process.
the agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up.